Hi, I've been making these camera traps for about five years. I think I've made about 30 of them. And uh, I learned from a friend who's made quite a few too. Uh, you don't need too much. You do need a 35 millimeter camera, obviously. I've been using the, lately I've been using these Godox uh, CT16s. They're great. The batteries in this last for months. I think they say it'll last a year on standby. If you get a, I only know about Canons, if you get a Canon, T7 or newer, or SL3 and newer, it won't have that big brown pin, center pin, which it needs for the for the transmitter to fire it. The uh, I think they do make an adapter, but I've never used it for that. The uh, This is an SL2 camera. They last pretty long on their own, but I use these dummy batteries to extend the battery life. They last forever. The uh, this, this is a battery charger. The newer ones on Amazon, you can unscrew the back and then solder in two leads. So it works pretty good. It's pretty easy to solder. I think I got a long video and at the end, somewhere in there, it shows how to do it, but it's pretty simple. And this is like a Sony knockoff battery. Uh, anyway, the dummy battery looks like this. It goes into where the regular battery and turns out. They're about like 20 bucks, I think, at Amazon. This one is a H. Y1C, they work pretty good. And uh, I've been using these Godox, the CT16s. They, uh, these, the receiver which fires the flash on two of those uh, AAA envelope, the black batteries, which are the pro ones. I've had it go for 55 days so far. It's down to less than 20%, but it still fires the flash. So the last couple months, when I use the cam traptions, I'd use dummy batteries, which just adds some complexity to it. Uh, you need a receipt. Oh, for the if you're going to use the dummy batteries, you can get holders that will hold two uh, D cells, and you can get these. You can get them on Amazon, and you can put three envelope or whatever you want AA batteries in, and they last a long time. For the motion detectors. There's only a couple that are any good, and that's the Movo, but I'm not sure if they make them anymore. Game Watcher, which they discontinued. The only issue with the Game Watcher is I've had them fail after a few years. Not all of them, but some of them. I've been using these TRL ones, which work really good. You can bend this. If it's made for uh, if you want it day or night only. This is the little sensor for that. And you don't need it. When you put it in a case, you have to drill an extra hole. But if you just bend it over like that, then you can fit this tight against the case. And uh, it works good. You just have to remember to put both the day and the night switches on to on. And uh, I think you only need one, but I'm not sure which. So I just turn them both on and it works good. You can get these programmed when you order them to fire how many ever times you want. The I requested the five and seven shots per... Uh, for detection and then it waits a second and fires again if there's still motion. He's got these little uh, switches here which work really good and one of them will make it five and one of them will make it seven shots and then you can adjust the sensitivity. I've always left it on his recommended settings which is the third one he has. He gives you a little sheet when you order it. Uh, yeah these mobiles work really good. The yeah, cam traptions, I started with these, they take six to eight seconds to start firing once it detects motion, which is way too long for a lot. These cost like some incredible amount, so they're kind of useless. I've tried the Pluto, which also takes six to eight seconds. I've tried this one, I think it's called, it's got Sniper or something in there, and it takes six to eight seconds again. The, this little sensor, when I got this, I think you got five for around $12 on Amazon. and. Uh, they're pretty simple to set up. You just got to get these little wires and put, put them in there and then your battery source and then plug this into your camera. The uh, drawback with these is it takes six to eight sec or about six to eight seconds to fire. So you can spend, you can get five of these for, I don't know what they are, for probably less than $15 or one of these for two or $300. And uh, these are just as good as this. Well, this one does have more adjustments. This does have a sensitivity adjustment, but uh, Anyway, those are the sensors. I put the, I have a long video, pretty much how to make everything, and I also have a PDF. And uh, I think I go over how to make this flash tube. I just put the flash inside here. And uh, 
This is a Pelican, or not a Pelican, this is an Apache 2800 case. They're about $30. They're just as good, if not even easier to use than the $100 plus dollar Pelican 1400. You can also fit them in a Pelican 1300, which is probably $75. And uh, these work pretty good. I'll go over some other cases. And uh, I think that's about it for the components. Hi, the last video, I think I forgot, I was talking about these uh, Godox CT16 receiver transmitters. You can get one transmitter and three receivers for $40. I think, the, uh, I think that's cheaper than just one receiver or transmitter from Cam Traptions. These so far are working really good. I'm going to go over uh, different cases I've been using. I think the best one is the uh, Apache 2800. You can get them for, from Harbor Freight for about $30. You've got plenty of room. It's got a Movo sensor and uh, the SL1 camera. But you've got lots of room in here, so it's kind of forgiving if you're off by a little. The, uh, I forget which number this one was. This is a Harbor Freight one too. It's uh, pretty small. You can fit it in there. You want to measure carefully. You can fit everything in. You just want to measure carefully. And uh, I think I have it set. Oh, I have a TRL sensor in this one, which comes out here. And uh, this one is, uh, what is it? it's a Men Menji M E I J I A. I got from Amazon. I think it was about thirty dollars. It's small too. Uh, I think the, if you're going to go for a super small one, this small harbor freight one is probably the way to go. And it's about, internal dimensions of the harbor freight is about seven and a quarter by nine and, uh, nine and a quarter. And it's only about maybe three and a half inches deep. But it will fit. And these are the electrical four by four by two electrical junction boxes. And uh, I have a longer video and a PDF that shows how to make those if you're interested. Daryl Dean has a, a Facebook page. It's called uh, D SLR Camera Trap Images and Designs. And he's got some PDFs. They're under files. You go to the page in the top. He has a PDF on with much better pictures on how he makes the camera traps. And he also puts a, makes it so you can put a big cable through it if you can lock it. These ones, all these ones, they have a little place you can put a padlock and a cable. Of course it's plastic, you can cut through it. If you follow his design, it would be a lot harder to cut through with a hacksaw. But I haven't had any of these stolen. I've had people, I put them in places where people aren't likely to walk, but most of them have picked up people and nobody's ever done anything with them. Uh, okay, the, uh, Pelican also makes a 1300, the 1400 is equivalent to the Pelican 2800, or the Apache 2800. The 2800 is about $30 from Harbor Freight. The Pelican 1400, I think, is over $100. This is a Pelican 1300. The thing I don't like about some of these Pelicans, it's really hard to open these latches and close them, and if you have it strapped to a tree or something, sometimes it's kind of annoying. But the 1300 has quite a bit of room, too. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes you can find these 1300s on sale at, uh, on eBay or something, and really there's not much that can go wrong with the used case. These are a pain. The patch opens and closes nicely. Yeah, my friend Tim Torrell, he made this one. It's, uh, he took a uh, ice chest. It, this ice chest is about seven and a quarter diameter by 10 inches deep. Sorry for these medieval measuring units, but all I have is a medieval tape measure. But uh, anyway, he uh, you just set the camera down there and I think this is 82 millimeter lens filter. And he put this pipe through the bottom and he can lock the cable through that. But this one's camouflaged so well, you almost don't need it. And another option, this is another one that Tim made. He took a, I think it's what, four by nine by nine, maybe four by eight by eight electrical junction box. I think they're, this is not a cheaper way to go. I think they're 
about $40 at Home Depot, and then for the camera to fit, he had to take another electrical junction box, the 2x4x4, which is about, I think, $12, something like that. And uh, you have to screw it on and off. It's not quite as convenient as the cases, but what it would let you do is if you need to get really low to like a burrow, you're trying to get like some burrowing rodent, you can get this right on the ground. Or and he used this one on trees to get gray squirrels running up and down. He put the, this uh, lens cover, I think they use them for security cameras, and uh, you can put a wide angle lens right up inside here. And he got some pretty cool cool pictures with a fisheye lens. And on this one he had a flip side so you could turn the camera around and use a regular, regular lens out this direction. So these are good for burrows and kind of specialty things. And I think that's about it. Thank you.